Thank you very much. So thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for um, sticking it out to the bitter end and, uh, and listening to the last lecture of the day. I realise I'm the only thing standing between you and your train home, so I'll try and take as uh, short a time of that 20 minutes as possible, but give you a, a good feeling what it's like to work with universities uh, and to be very dependent on universities. And uh, my name's Andy Bell, I've, so I've been the CTO of this company uh, Zoomwave for a small number of years, but I've been with the company for about seven, so I've come, if you like, up as the company has grown. And I wanted to give you a little bit of an idea who Zinwave are and where we've come from, and give you an idea of the sorts of interactions we've had with universities and what types of collaboration um, we've had over the years uh, with the various universities and what that has done for us. And uh, hopefully a couple of conclusions at the end of what we think of uh, working with universities. So first of all, a couple of words about Zinwave. Um, we make active wideband distributed antenna systems. And what that really means is making sure your phone works in big buildings where it wouldn't otherwise. If you've been to uh, places like um, Heathrow Airport and, and so on, those are the sorts of places that have a distributed antenna system. And a place as big as that needs something based on fibre optics and not the old style coax that used to exist. And that radio over fibre technology um, was developed at Cambridge University and University College London. Uh, so we have our headquarters in Cambridge, but we also have offices uh, globally now. And we sell globally as well. So from being a very small UK Cambridge based company, we now are a global company. Uh, with customers who are some of the biggest companies in the world. And if I show you the map with the little pink dots of where we sell, for a company of something like 25 people, that's selling to an awful lot of very strange places. And when we have to go and support these installations, it does take an awful long time to get there. Um, so it's in very important that technology works for us and is easy to understand for all the people across the globe. Um, so just a bit more about what a, a distributed antenna system is and why do we need the technology that, uh, that we use in it. In our particular case, a distributed antenna system is, takes an input from some sort of base station, uh, usually a cellular base station, could be a public safety, and distributes via fiber optics to a number of secondary hubs and from there to a number of remote units. And there'll be typically one remote unit in each part of the building. And that remote unit is your power amplifier and your no lo low noise amplifier. And our system is capable of any type of service from fairly low VHF frequencies all the way up to the latest 4G frequencies. Any type of standard, 2G, 3G, 4G. In fact, we still have systems, uh, 1G public safety analog systems out there in the world uh, using our fiber optics. So very high tech distribution for extremely low tech. Uh, usually security applications. Any sort of fibre and flexible distribution throughout the building and a calibration system that means that whatever you're sending over whatever distance it's always got the same uh, coverage at every antenna without the building. So it is a very unique technology um, over a very wide bandwidth and it's that uh, technology that's very important to us as a company. And it all stemmed from a DTI link project called Friday. Back in 2002, the company was founded. So we're, uh, we're in our 10th anniversary year this year. It took a couple of years before we were able to steal the researcher out of Cambridge University and convince him to come and tell us how to do it. He helped us build the, uh, the first prototype. And that was enough to raise some seed funding uh, for our first commercial product development, which was released in 2006, called the 2700. 2008, we revamped that to the 3000 series. And it's that family of products that's now um, it produced its first million pounds worth of revenue in 2009, and roughly 70% compound annual growth rate ever since. 
And the reason for that, the reason for that success is based on access to the expertise that founded the company. Uh, there are three professors who founded the company, Professors Ian White and Richard Penty from Cambridge University and Alwyn Seeds from uh, University College London and their departments. It's, it's that technology and that expertise that has really underpinned the technology we use today. But they didn't just plant the seed and let it go and say thank you very much here, have some IP and get on with it. They've actually continued to stay with the company and nurture that seed in terms of our strategic de technical direction over the last 10 years. And they've given us access to their departments and their researchers in transferring the knowledge, particularly of photonics, but in more, in, more generally uh, about wideband radio, um, and helped us with specific technology investigations where there have been specific problems we've had to solve along the way. They're also much better at industry in finding where you can get, particularly government money, where you can get it from, how you can get your hands on it, and what words you have to write in the application to make sure that you win, or you win some of the time at least. And on top of that, not only do they have the people to make you a success, they've also got the tools and the facilities. I couldn't tell you what any of these bits of equipment are called, um, but I know we've used some of them, and uh, it's been very useful actually going into the universities, not only to use their equipment, but also to lend them our product and our technology and say, what can it do? And the universities have done research projects and students have done research projects using our equipment and have done things with our equipment it was never designed to do, but have made some interesting uh, possibilities open for us. So to go into a little bit more detail about one or two of those uh, projects, I mentioned the Friday project, the fibre radio for in-building distributed antenna systems, as it was called. And that was the first demonstration of high data rate wireless signals over any form of worst case fibre. Basically meaning you can put your distributed system, distribution system over any optics that you might find in a building. And EPSERC actually funded the transfer of that knowledge um, they actually funded sending the researcher to Zinwave. Um, if it hadn't been for that transfer of knowledge, Zinwave would never have been able to make the com commercial prototype and get that seed funding. We've also had a TSB project, uh, part of the Photonics 21 uh, program, called Next Generation Radio Over Fibre Distributed Antenna System. I suppose we should have called it about 4G because it would have sounded good, but it was just next gen. And that's actually where, in the distributed world, the, the, real, the holy grail is the convergence of analog and digital transmission systems. And we've been following on from that for Tonics 21 in a couple of areas with postdoc and uh, CDT projects doing parallel analog and digital transmission and also digital DAS conversion techniques. I suspect the DAS world will go digital uh, something like 10 years after the rest of the world goes actually probably be more like 20 years after the rest of the world goes digital, mainly because the bandwidth's involved. There's about two and a half gigahertz of bandwidth involved in all the wireless systems that are out there. It would be nice to be able to just do the little bits of 4G and 2G and 3G, but there are so many different wireless systems out there these days that we tend to carry everything in analog rather than digital. But certainly this is probably the, the way that future is going to go, and it's a technology that we are going to need in Zinwave. Another one that we've been uh, involved or that the universities have, uh, have done and we've been involved with is the TINA project, the Intelligent Airport, more a vertical project looking at the types of technology that you would need in an airport and how you might use distributed antenna systems as part of that. And the particular interest for us was the combination of distributing wireless services, cellular services and location services. And location services, particularly at an airport, um, but also in uh, places like large shopping malls, is of great interest, great commercial interest to the owners of the airport and, and the owners of the shopping mall. And actually, Zinwave also sponsors its own studies where necessary into, in these case, a couple of things like antenna isolation detection and the effects of back reflection problems on radio and fibre performance. 
There are other things we are looking at and have uh, tried to take advantage of. There are obviously the seventh framework projects and the one that's of particular interest to us is research for the benefit of SMEs. Uh, and we've looked at Eurostars projects. To date, foreign collaboration has always been tricky for someone of our size. It's much easier when you're a partner with a university. And I've talked about working with Postgres, particularly out of the Friday project. I suppose the, the, the equivalent of that now is the Knowledge Transfer Partnership. That's taken over from where EPSEC did the original work. And it's a very good way of acquiring the knowledge and expertise you need from a university. Um, but it also uh, is very good for training the person that you, uh, that you have in the company as well. Give them business experience, personal prefer uh, professional development. But it also feeds back to the university on what the business relevance is of their research and their teaching. So it works for all three of the parties. It's a, it's a great way of doing it. So in conclusion, I think and the company believes that working with these universities has been absolutely essential to the success that Zinwave has had, both in terms of providing the leading edge technology right at the very start and throughout the life of the company and into the future, and providing access to the sorts of problem solving expertise and facilities that you just wouldn't have uh, in any other way, certainly wouldn't have that cheaply. Probably shouldn't say that in front of the particular uh, <laughs> people we have. Um, and it actually, as the, the Vodafone uh, gentleman was saying, it very much enhances the credibility of a small company like Zinwave being associated with such leading edge uh, universities and to demonstrate the uniqueness of the product and the credibility of the company. It's good for the investors, it's good for the people you're selling to. So it has been a very important part of our success. Thank you very much ladies and gentlemen.